welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Up for restoring this week, I've got a couple of the John Deere tractors. As you can see, both of these models are pretty heavily play-worn. Um, and I've, I've been waiting on some parts for this. It's been very difficult to find the uh, original tires for these. These are both missing steering wheels as well. Um, and so it's it's taken me a while to put together all the bits and pieces for this. Uh, this is probably coming up on a, about a three month long restoration. Um, but I'm happy to have them finally wrapped up and uh, share the whole process with you. So as with any restoration that we begin here, I'm going to start by taking these apart. So I've got my small diameter uh, drill bit to drill out my center hole. Um, these are just slightly smaller than the uh, size of the screws that I'll be using to put these back together. Um, and I wanna go just a little bit at a time to make sure that I, I don't go too deep and don't go through the casting. Uh, you'll also notice that um, I'm just doing these in my hand. Uh, I actually feel like I get a much better uh, feel and control uh, just holding the model rather than putting it in a vise where I, I think I can press too hard or you know not quite at the right angle for what I want to be doing. Um, this also lets me kind of feel how that bit is biting in so I need to be careful but I prefer to do them by hand. After I get the uh, center holes done you can see I'm coming back real slow with a, a much larger bit and this is just to remove the uh, flange piece of those castings. Um, as you can see I've got a really sharp bit and it really doesn't take very much. Uh, I want to go kind of slow and just kind of nibble at it to take a little bit at a time um, until I can get those castings apart. So with the castings apart, I've gone ahead and threaded our original inner hole um, and that sets it up so that I can use these uh, replacement, these button head screws uh, for when we get ready to put these castings back together. Um, the next step will be to remove the wheels and uh, strip off all the remaining original paint uh, to get these ready for a respray. One of the things um, in kind of doing this teardown on these that I thought about is I, I'm pretty sure that this model was painted in the, the factory in Lesney assembled. Um, I, when I stripped these down, I didn't find any evidence of green paint inside of the castings. So I don't believe these were riveted posts. I think they were um, fully assembled before they were painted. And so I want to do the same on these. Um, so when I was trying to put these together, um, I had a, a bit of a difficulty, and I don't know if I was trying to mix and match my uppers and lowers, which you know, theoretically it shouldn't matter um, if they were the same model, came out of the same mold, that they should be interchangeable, but uh, I just couldn't get some of these to uh, snap down, and I, I think it was maybe just a little bit of uh, flange or remnant of the flange that was in there. Um, so I did a little bit of light sanding along there, and that's anytime you're doing a, a tap and drill on these, uh, this seems to be an often forgotten step. Um, and sometimes I do it, sometimes I feel like I don't need to, um, but on this one it definitely was not fitting right until I took a little bit of that edge down from that original flange. And uh, with all of that kind of fine-tuned, um, some real firm, even pressure got the casting to snap back together. Um, you can see I don't have any gaps in there. It all looks nice and tight. So I'm in, going to uh, insert one of my replacement button head screws here, and this will be ready to paint. When I got ready to paint these, uh, I wanted to try to come as close to the original color as I could. And I started out with this uh, Tester's Gloss Green, 
as a base color, um, but in comparing the other models, I knew I needed a little bit of white, and uh, I'm using this flat white with that to knock down some of the sheen, some of the shine on this. Uh, if I compared uh, this color to some of my earlier models, um, I I definitely, you know, it's, it's not real true John Deere green. Uh, the, the paint coming out of the factory from Lesney was more of a, a muted green, um, and I'm pretty close here on this mix of getting uh, something that's got just a little bit of the white in it to knock it down, um, and definitely not something that is uh, a gloss. And uh, so I like mixing up my paint in these little cups. Uh, use my eyedropper to uh, reload in my airbrush, and uh, when I when I apply the coats on the castings, I, I really like to do a few uh, smaller or, or shallow coats and just kind of build that up slowly over time. And so that's that's what I'm going to do here. You can see I, I brought down uh, one of my uh, original models here, and this is really just a point of reference on trying to accomplish the color match. Um, and as as I said, you know, there's a little bit of white in this, um, and it's not as uh, shiny as um, some of the other models, but uh, I think I got a pretty good match. I did want to do one of these in a true John Deere green, and so, uh, you know, call it a custom. Um, you can see it's it's obviously the true Deere green on this model. Um, it's not a, a Lesney color. It's not a Lesney original color. Um, but as a, a kid who grew up on a farm, um, who learned to drive on a John Deere 3020 tractor, um, I wanted to do uh, a restoration that was in the true John Deere green as well as an original restoration. So doing one of each on these. After the paints had uh, 48 hours to cure, um, I, and I've kind of in my waiting period here, you can see I've cleaned up all my uh, axles, gotten all the rust off, uh, used a little son of a gun uh, plastic restore on all my wheel hubs here. Um, this model is ready to reassemble. When I'm reassembling, I always want to make sure I look at both sides of the wheels and try to pick the the best side uh, to go out, the side that's going to be visible from display. Um, when I painted these, I used just some little toothpicks in the, the wheel hubs. That keeps the paint out of the hub, makes sure that the axle still spins uh, nicely, and it lets me paint all the way around every last little surface on this. So uh, worked out pretty well for these models, and it's definitely something I'm going to try again in some future restorations. Um, I know I've shown you in past videos uh, using my drill press to kind of mushroom out the end of these. And, uh, you know, I, I see the comments on a lot of these restoration channels. Well, what if I don't have a drill press? And so I wanted to do something a little bit different in this restoration. And that is uh, I wanted to show you another method that you can use. Uh, it's very inexpensive. I just got a little uh, ball peen hammer. And I'm just going to go at these uh, very slowly to mushroom out the end of that axle. With the wheels and axles all reassembled, uh, last thing I want to do is touch up some of the grill and headlight details. Um, in order to do that, I'm using just uh, a plain silver marker. I like these ones from Pilot. Uh, get them in a two pack, one silver and one gold. And uh, I've got the link down in the description on these. And then to, uh, to apply it, I like to use just uh, a really fine little brush. Uh, so I'm going to start here in the grill, kind of 
kind of one of the safest areas um, and do just a really thin coat of this silver ink. Um, as you can see, it, uh, it goes on really easy, applies really nice, and it is as close of a match to the original uh, Lesney factory silver as I've been able to find. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and touch up all of the grills and headlights on these. Um, on the John Deere model, the one that I, I did the true John Deere green on, um, I may touch up a few more elements, uh, maybe the, the hood and the gas cap and that. Um, because after all, if I'm doing a custom, I might as well do it up the way I like it. So here we have the finished restoration. Uh, this is the gray wheel model in the uh, Lesney original green color. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Super, super nice restoration. Um, took me a long time to source all the parts, those hard to find uh, gray front wheels. Um, but it was really a lot of fun to do these two. And of course the, uh, the resto mod, the custom and the true John Deere green. Um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm a farm kid. I grew up with John Deere's and uh, it's always something that kind of bothered me when I looked at these and they said that it's a John Deere tractor. I said, no, it's not. It's not John Deere green. Um, but I've got one now that is John Deere green and uh, has the nice sharp black wall tires on it. Um, and so this, this is really a treat for me to do these two. Uh, I love having the original hard to find gray wheel model. Um, it, I love the, the resto mod just as much. Um, and so of course the last thing to do to finish up any good restoration is to put these models back in the box. And for those of you that have been following my channel, you know that I attempted a very, very difficult box restoration on, uh, on this, this tractor model. And so, uh, I've been on the hunt for a, a model that would be worthy enough to fit, uh, going into that really tough um, and, re and really nice now copy of an original box and so I think uh, this gray wheeled model for sure fits the bill.
thanks so much for joining me this week for uh, these new restorations. As I said, I've, I've been trying to wrap these up for uh, quite a few months now, and uh, May has just been crazy uh, hectic for me with work. Um, I think I've been in seven different states this month, and I've only actually spent about nine days in the office for the entire month of May. And with that kind of travel schedule, it's been uh, difficult for me to, to keep up with uh, new content each week. Um, but I, I have been working on stuff. It just means I got a backlog of uh, video, you know, raw video that I got to cut and uh, dub and get uh, formatted to uh, to upload um, and, and get them online. So uh, thanks for your patience and, and bearing with me. But um, uh, these uh, these restorations were really a lot of fun for me. Um, and you know, the rest of mod especially getting to, to customize it a little bit um, staying true to you know the original um, but uh, bringing back that original John Deere green uh, this is just now one of the one of my most favorite pieces in my collection um, and just super happy with how it turned out uh, it's been a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed watching this uh, video as well as always uh, if you did enjoy the video give us a like down below uh, don't forget to comment. Let me know what I did right, what I did wrong, what you want to see on the channel. And uh, as always, click that subscribe button so you can keep up to date with uh, all of our future videos. Thanks so much for joining me this week for another episode of Vintage Diecast Restoration.